we've looked at how, from an evolutionary perspective, cooperation entails aggression. But next we're going to look at how aggression itself has a dual nature. In evolutionary psychology and clinical psychology and criminology, splitting aggression and violence into two types has proved a useful dichotomy. Aggression is considered both proactive and reactive. And as we'll see, these two types are more and less related to other sorts of positive and negative outcomes. And they have distinct biological bases. Richard Wrangham, an anthropologist, primatologist, in his 2018 PNAS paper, he noted some parallel dichotomies to proactive and reactive aggression used in legal systems, psychiatry, and animal behavior. Some apply better to traits, some to the actions it themselves. First, in the case of proactive aggression, this aggression is typically premeditated. It's typically instrumental. It's for a purpose. Um, there's a citable reason as to why it occurred. Proactive aggression can be predatory in that case. Um, the reason there for the aggression or violence to kill prey. Offensive aggression is proactive aggression as opposed to defensive. And aggression that is controlled or planned out and cold is considered proactive aggression in alignment with predatory and offensive um, or instrumental aggression. So think premeditated, stealthy stalking to kill or assault, going after a victim in a calculated manner with little emotion. So like an assassin, um, or as we see in defense, military, um, and with gangster movies. And the common element in all of these is low emotionality and careful planning of the violent act. By contrast, reactive aggression is impulsive. It's emotional, it's affective aggression. It's hostile and it's defensive. So it can be a reaction to an insult, for example. This emotional kind of aggression is sometimes called hot aggression as opposed to cold aggression for proactive. This is the aggression that might follow um, the discovery of some kind of violation in a relationship, like cheating or lying, or some kind of humiliating insult. In the most general terms, proactive aggression is premeditated, it's deliberate, and there's clearly an effort to harm a particular victim. It's not just random lashing out. Reactive aggression, on the other hand, is unplanned, emotionally aroused uh, perpetrator in that case. It's a response to a threat or a frustrating event. And the only goal is just to remove that provocation not to harm a particular victim. A key feature of proactive aggression is that low emotional arousal. This helps um, the organism attack in a stealthy manner. And also key to proactive aggression is that it's only executed when the aggressor perceives that the costs are low and that it's likely that they're going to achieve their goal. Reactive aggression, on the other hand, involves this sudden increase in sympathetic nervous system activity and a failure of cortical regulation. There's easy switching among targets. So it's not aimed directly at a particular victim. Um, when swinging a punch, for example, in a fit of reactive aggression, it almost doesn't matter who exactly it hits. And another feature of reactive aggression is that it just gets more and more and more intense. It has this feature of escalating intensity. Proactive aggression has been found to be unaffected by interventions that reduce reactive aggression. And that's a key way that researchers have been able to um, tell these two types of aggression apart. 
So for example, reactive aggression, that high emotionality, um, lashing out indiscriminately, is helped by um, antidepressants like lithium and SSRIs. Proactive aggression is thought to involve hypoactivity in the amygdala. That's an underactive amygdala, as opposed to an overactive amygdala, um, which is responsible for emotion processing. On the other hand, reactive aggression is thought to involve a serotonin deficiency. So it's reduced with serotonin interventions. And it's hypothesized to involve reduced prefrontal activity. So in that uh, fit of reactive aggression with indiscriminate lashing out, the individual is not getting the usual prefront prefrontal control um, that they have. Finally, some examples of proactive aggression um, in, in non-human animals is sexually selected infanticide. So um, killing a particular um, infant. Human stalkers are an example of proactive aggression and also premeditated killers or bullies who target one victim. Reactive aggression, for example, might happen in the midst of a bar fight when um, it's pretty indiscriminate where uh, some of the blows are directed. Reactive aggression might happen um, in the case of crimes of passion. Typically, these are associated with something like a case of infidelity. Um, and you can also see reactive aggression in road rage. Richard Wrangham theorized that finding aggression and violence split off into these two types across species demonstrates quite well that it's not going to be possible to answer questions like this one. Are humans good or evil by nature? Is evil violent aggression? We need to add detail. Violent aggressive behaviors are themselves of a dual nature. That claim that there are two types of aggression, it's strength, uh, strengthened by multiple kinds of data, genetic data, um, neural data, um, pharmacological data, like I mentioned, data showing the effects of reproductive hormones and neurotransmitters, and also um, repeatedly replicated behavioral data. And importantly, the evidence has been convergent across species, as we'll see next. Wrangham reviewed evidence indicating that aggressive behavior changes from early humans to humans' current state, beginning most likely when humans, chimps, and bonobos split off from a common ancestor around 6 to 10 million years ago. I'll touch on some of the details in a few species, starting with the cats. Then we'll talk about rodents, followed by apes and humans. Cats have been found to show two different kinds of violent attack behaviors in early research on neural systems. This work involves stimulating two different parts of the brain system of a cat that are considered important to triggering aggressive responses. Stimulating different regions on the hypothalamus, one of those parts, led to two unique aggressive behaviors, referred to as quiet biting versus effective defensive behavior. These types of behaviors look very different and sounded different, indicating strikingly opposed neural roots to these aggressive acts. Quiet biting is the aggression of the stalking hunter. Effective defensive behavior is the aggression of a screeching, clawing, hissing cat. These early findings align with the proactive reactive aggression distinction. Researchers have also studied male lab rats and their feeding attacks, which would be on mice or cockroaches. And these were compared to proactive aggression in other experimental findings. One cluster of rat behavioral features 
was low physiological arousal, no social communication, and going strategically for vulnerable parts in a manner congruent to that stalking cat. This would be the um, analog to proactive aggression. In contrast, reactive aggression of rats was detectably different in a few ways. There was high physiological arousal, so breathing and heart rate were up, and threatening communication noises and actions were present. Similar to cats, rats were found to have markedly different neural systems underlying these two different kinds of aggression. Specifically in rats, as in other mammals, aggression is importantly modulated by a neural circuit that links up the amygdala, the hypothalamus, and the periaqueductal gray. More specifically, researchers have linked proactive aggression, that quiet stalking behavior, to central and basal lateral amygdala, and the lateral hypothalamus, and the ventrolateral periaqueductal gray. By contrast, among rats, reactive aggression involves the medial amygdala, so a different part of the same, uh, a different location on the same part of the brain, the medial basal hypothalamus, again, and the dorsal periaqueductal gray. These different patterns in innervation between proactive and reactive aggression were the same as those that were found in cats in early research um, when they noticed this difference in cats' brains during quiet biting versus effective defensive behavior. So the amygdala, the hypothalamus, and the periaqueductal gray are all brain areas implicated in aggression and violence, but distinctly different parts of these brain areas are associated with different kinds of aggression. Wrangham describes similarly differentiated behavioral patterns of aggression in chimpanzees and bonobos. In chimps, they displayed proactive aggression in the form of organized, warlike, careful ambush behavior, which is the video I posted um, to watch next. They travel as a troop to the edge of their own territory to attack a neighboring group, and there's large-scale casualties. They also demonstrate um, proactive aggression in the form of sex-specific infanticide. And when it comes to reactive aggression, chimps also frequently show high levels of violent aggressive behavior when um, the reward for something jointly worked for um, is not given.